Hello. I would Hi. like to welcome you to our video oral history project. And we're so pleased to have you here. I'd like to introduce you to the world. And uh, I am introducing Lonnie Boucher Everich. Uh, do you ever have any nicknames? Your friends call you Lonnie or? Uh, they call me Lon. Lon. <laughs> we learn all the hidden information here. Um, and Boucher is for my professional name. Your professional name. And, uh, and uh, Everich was your married name, which you've continued. Wonderful. I'd like to ask you something about your early life. I'd like to know um, what are your parents' names, what nationality were they, where did they come from, uh, how did you arrive in San Francisco, did you have any brothers and sisters, uh, uh, cousins, anybody that I would love to hear their name. Well, my mother's name is Dolores, and my father's name is Ted, and my father was Scandinavian, and he was born in Seattle, Washington. And my mother is was Irish and French, and you know, my father's Scandinavian and, and Alsace. He's yeah. supposed to be, you know. So, and then my mother and father. My father was in the war. Which war? World War Two. Mm -hmm. And my my they met in San Francisco. Wow. And my father was not mortally wounded. He was very badly wounded in the war. Right. Um, and he spent a whole year in the hospital in Stanford. And they got married here, actually at my grandmother's house on Washington Street. And, but my father wanted to move back to, San, to Seattle where his family was. And that's where I was born and my sister was born. But my mother couldn't take the weather. What's so, your sister's name? Pammy. Pamela. Okay. Pamela. Yeah. And we came here in, in, when we were four years old. So I consider San Francisco my home. Totally. Um, where did you Where did your family land back at that time? Where did you live? In San we Francisco? lived on Washington and Divisadero, and um, we went to Grand School, which is no longer. It's one of the most was the most wonderful grammar school in the whole world, and we still I still have all of our friends that we still get together. The ones we grew up in. High school. Was it, and then when high school was Lowell, which I went to the original Lowell on Masonic. What's across cross street? Do you remember Masonic? Okay. It's a cross street. Um, I'd say Hayes. Maybe it's okay, Hayes. So, so it's part of the part of the lower Hayes. Hayes. Yeah, it's still there. Area. Yeah. And then the the when the new Lowell moved to the other side of the avenue. So gotcha. at that time, I don't think a lot of people are aware there ever was another Lowell. So it's right. Important. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I moved away. Went to Hawaii. My parents got divorced. And uh, then I went to Los Angeles. And as soon as I was out of high school. First year of college, I wanted to move back to San Francisco. And so you did? Yes, I did. And uh, where did you move to? My first apartment was on Jackson Street. Went back to Pacific Heights. And then um, we moved, um, and that's that's about the time that, actually my mother called up and she said the um, Longshoreman's Hall was having a great dance, you should need to go. And Remember who was playing? No, we were just talking about that. Because we're thinking of the Charlatans. I didn't go you to that approximately one. what year this was? It was 60... It's 65. 65, Herman, I meant 65. Okay. So 65. We went to the California Hall, and that's where I met my husband. And the Charlatans were playing, I think. And what was his name? What Herman. Is it? Herman? Yeah. And... The Big Brother and Holding Company, and then the next weekend, the Film World opened, and for we went Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. In the Jefferson Airplane. Jefferson Airplane, mm -hmm. and we were talking about. I was just remember seeing the doors, and I'll never forget seeing the doors, and how he used to go from speaker to speaker to speaker, and you know, right. and then Jimi Hendrix and Janis, you know, all the people we saw. But it was basically Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and you'd go, and you'd have. An apple, and at that time, no one really drank. You know, right? You smoke pot, but that's about you know. You go up. There's no there. alcohol on the scene. Yeah, you know. just go and dance and smoke pot, and you know. But it was just, and it cost a dollar. That's right. You know, and went so, up to a big two at some yeah. point. <laughs> and you know, you think back then, you get, you come in and you get your apple and you get your poster, and um, you think back, and uh, the posters got better and better, and um, and also during that time, I was involved with. Um, 
and one of my childhood friends who you're going to meet next week, they're the Resners, Ginny Resner, and Brother Halal, and Bill, and, and they started the Straight Theater. Right. And um, I basically, my, my involvement was cleaning it, cleaning the toilets, which are going yeah, to I think there's a great man, Bill uh -huh. Graham, that said it's more than just the artists on the stage. It's yeah. the security clearing the aisles to make it safe. Somebody looking and making sure the place is an environment yeah. ready. So to they were creating that, that that environment. And but there's one thing that part of the '60s that I'll never forget: that sitting in your car and you're driving in the car, and on the radio they said that this is the summer of love, and, and people are coming to San Francisco, and you need to open up your homes and invite everybody in because people are coming to. And there's not enough summer place of to stay, and there's right. And and the hate at that time, well, still is, but the, not as much at that time. The hate was a haven because all every all the big Victorians and all the big flats and and everyone could just hang out and and it was a really actually happy time. It was not a, you know, there when the, the the big drugs didn't come until a couple of years right. later. So it was still fun, and it was just. Every day was just, it was just a wonderful How old time. were you right, right about this time? Sixteen. Perfect. So when you come into the hate, just walking down the street yeah. was a party. Was well, a yeah, it was time. a party and, you know, and, and the Beatles, everything was just a very just happy time. And, the, and then, and you just, the peace movement, I mean, the marches and there just really was a lot of love going around and people just had a wonderful time and you just and at that time at that period of life you know, no one worked i mean we worked but everyone was half unemployed or somehow the post it was all covered uh -huh. somehow it was all covered yeah it was all covered and um and you just met and people were dro coming to droves to san francisco did you have any feeling of well, maybe there's a change happening in the world. Did you have any, I mean, I've heard all different opinions, people saying, well, coming to the Haight-Ashbury in the 60s made me feel like I didn't have to have that 9 to 10, 9 to 5 job that my parents always said I had. I can be myself. I can contribute. I can try to help towards informing people. Well, the thing at that time, you didn't think of a career or a job, and you... You basically, most of us didn't grow up till we were about 40, so. <laughs> I mean, you know, you didn't, no one was, they were the ones that got married very young, had the children, but most of us really either got married later, just, you know, you just, you worked if you had to work, you got by. But Did, did you have any favorite bands? Did you, did you, um... Were you there at the Straight Theater for, for the events? Yeah. I mean, at yeah. the events? Could you remember... Any of the 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 things that happened at the Straight Theater? That's terrible. I don't. Okay. Do you remember lights? And well, I remember the light shows. You can't forget the light shows. Right. You know, and and we just found out uh, Brian Epps is what who did who did the light shows, and he's the founder of Brotherhood Light. He's which coming. Is, he's coming. Yes, next week, and. Um, uh, and then Reggie and Caitlin and Halal. They, they had all dance that. classes there. Yeah. Uh, Caitlin taught dance. Yeah. They had a, s a Saturday morning uh, breakfast or they had a Sunday morning meditation mm -hmm. or um, the straight was used when they had events on the street. Oh, yeah. I, you know, but I there was a blank there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I right. can't really remember those. Do you videos. remember some of the happenings with your relationship with the people there? Did they, Were there any problems in operating the straight? Do you over here any uh, uh, there was another building down the street that later became the I beam mm -hmm. and before that was a Masonic uh, large or yeah, Masonic something. Yeah. I know there was problems but I don't really remember you know and then the just to run, was closed, a, to run yeah. a venue with that many people and uh, everybody just having fun mm -hmm. makes a lot of work for you, you yeah. know but there were events happening at the straight theater. The same way there were events happening at the film auditorium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as you're talking, well, Friday night we went here, here, and here. There was also the Avalon Ballroom. We went to the Avalon Ballroom. We went to every single one. You know, you, you go to, yeah, the Avalon Ballroom was really big. We remember, you know, going right. to the Avalon. Yeah. And then there was the, uh, of course, the film auditorium, but then there was the film West yeah. on Van Ness and Market. Uh, that opened when the Fillmore East opened. Yeah. Before that, it was called Carousel Ballroom. Right. Well, I, yeah, I remember more remember of that. Of I, didn't, I didn't go to Fillmore West that much. But you went to the Carousel? Yeah, I went. That was the early years. The yeah. Carousel Ballroom, the Avalon, mm -hmm. the Straight Theater. Yeah. 
and whatever you do you remember walking down a street in the hate and seeing five people thousands of people walking into the park I'm interested in knowing some of your firsthand uh, information of anything you might remember if it's not actual the spirit of it well, it's more of the spirit I'm thinking of the was it the BN I'm just I'll never forget you know I did get a, I did go to Altamont you know? okay um, but I just remember just the, everyone was just really just the, the colors. People wore a lot of colors. And I don't think you could really duplicate what people looked like during that period. No. I mean, even though people try, you can't. All the velvets and silks The velvets, and the, dye, the tie dye, the, you know, I mean, sometimes I think you look at it now and you might laugh, but at that time, you know, the beads and the. It was a creative expression. Yeah, it was, you know, and the incense. Um, and the way we looked, and the long hair, and um, you know, it just it's just a lot of, of love, and people cared about each other at that time. There you wasn't really a lot of people. Do you feel in any way, in a small, small way? I mean, one person can only do so much, but thousands can do more. At that time, we did. I think we did. We and were. How, how do you feel that the pressure got put on the world by what was going on then? Do you, on small way, any of the changes. Well, I think we had a big part with the Vietnam War, I think, with the uh, protests that we did. I think there was a, I mean, it was taken very seriously at that time. I don't know, I'm not sure now as much as it was then. Because, I mean, pe people really felt, I think we were, felt really reunited, united at that time. Right. As a, as a whole. Right. You know, and against the war. A lot easier to say it together than with, as one person. Right. And be part of a community that you felt as a, did you have this feeling, a family? Yeah, I think everybody felt that way. I, I think, and there wasn't just, I, I just think there wasn't the violence then. Right. You know, so it, in it groups, was in crowds. Protected. It ended at Masonic and then continued into the park. Yeah, but I mean, as a group, people never, you really didn't feel afraid of the crowd. You know, 18 is very formative years, and the couple of years before that is very formative. In, in, the artwork, in the music, in your friendships. Mm -hmm. Do you think you can think of anyone that might you might have respected that might have influenced you in agreeing with you with what you believed or inspire you to believe? Do you feel you are who you are now as a product of what you you've lived? Do you feel that there's anybody in your life, my many people, a friend, someone that? Can you remember anybody, anything, or even a song or the music that might have? influence you when you were young to say, yeah, this is true. Come on, people, let's get together, or whatever it is. Mm, that's a good question. There's not a person. No. That I can say. That but a group of musicians, or the way people dressed and the freedom of expression, or the, any of that, helped you be today who you are. Because we all are who we are from what Just we've been. The music had a big part of it. A big part of it, yeah. A lot of people that have sat in your chair have told us that. Yeah, it's I think the music. the music, and actually I think the Beatles had a big part. The Beatles were a big part. It's the Beatles, good. when the Beatles came, everything, I mean, there's something about the Beatles music. It was just every album they did, everyone would look forward to the new music. Just the new it was, it was the only type of music that was different. Right. You know, and it was just everyone would come and, and oh my goodness, there's a new Beatle. You know, it just, and it was just. Strawberry Fields Forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. Um, someone we interviewed left us with the word of John Lennon, imagine. And well, you'll never forget the day he died. Exactly. It was a really tragic day. I mean, it's, you know, yeah, it's it really was. I mean, just couldn't believe that, some, you know, that he, someone would kill. So, some of the message of the Beatles and the, the, I think the music Beatles, yeah. affected you. Yeah. And we find, we're finding that a lot with people who are interviewing, that if they may not put it in words, they can, they say it in a song. They You've heard it in a song, and it's the music. So, kind of a tribute to musicians is a very powerful uh, place to be because you affect so many people. And then there was, um, he was killed. So, um, um, who wrote Let's Get It On? Um, Marvin. Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye was a big. Yes. He was, he was, he was a big voice mm -hmm. during that time. Yes. A lot of some of the art people don't realize so much of the R&B and the blues played so much of a part in uh, we had that Midwest influence as well as the English influence yeah. coming yeah. in at the same time, changing the music forever. Exactly. 
Um, did was when when you worked at the Strike Theater? Um, was it a job you had to work all day, or was it something you did at the night, or you did it in the morning, or? Well, we just were did there. Did you do it alone? Did you have? No, I would work friends? with them. Yeah, with friends. You know, you wouldn't do it. You didn't, and you would just if things need to be done, you would just help out. Yeah. Right. Um, that's kind of the way major events in the park take place. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, where do you live now? In San I'm Francisco. In, Hill. in San Francisco. Oh. And. Uh, uh, do you ever come to the hate now? Do you ever no, once no. in a while? Yeah, actually, this is the first time in a long time. In a long time, um, riding down the streets of the hate now and driving here, and from what you remember, um, do you have any thoughts on it? Do you have you have any thoughts on the future of young people? Young people still come here yeah. from all over. Mm -hmm. But it's not the way it was. The problem is there's not the music in the park, and there's not the what was there then. So part of what I'm asking you is what was there then, and well, the, there was, you know, the the um, heroin, the heavy drugs came into San Francisco in a later time, and, and, and destroyed really what the beauty of what was here. Yeah, a and lot I, of people have said the the lower hate hit the higher hate, and. There was no control. I mean, I don't really see very much of the old hair that there used to be. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm curious, uh, the the friends you said you had from the straight theater, mm -hmm. um, one has moved away and stayed, and some are local, and I just think it's amazing uh, you've kept a relationship on, on some level. You, you know these people still. Yeah. Uh, and you were friends before the straight theater? We grew up together. You grew we up went to together. Grandma's. Oh my goodness. So this is a life friendship. Oh yeah. Connection. yeah. Most of the kids we you know, we, the ones who were still are friends, the ones we went to school with. And we're know, interviewing we a few people. Um next well next week Hillel, Reggie Reggie, um, and uh, Arthur Green. Mm -hmm and uh, some other employees of the straight theater. Yeah, you'll, they'll be able to give you, you know, they were just so entrenched. It's wonderful that you're going to be able to talk to them. They have every flyer and everything, oh, yeah. which is only one part of it. But you worked there, you were part, you were friends with them, and I had to feel there were people with the public coming in. You were part of the backstage. You were mm -hmm. part of the staff mm -hmm. there. Uh, and did the staff itself have, uh, as you saw it, do you remember any of it? Did the staff evolve? Were there in the beginning no light shows and all of a sudden we're going to bring music in? Or um, did you interact as friends even though people did their own jobs? I mean, did you have a team feeling, a family feeling among the people that worked at the street? Oh, well, that's how it was. It was, a, yeah, more like a family. It was like a family. And uh, did you ever go out down the street to have a cup of coffee or eat together? That oh, yeah, it was, yeah, everyone did that out. together, yeah. So, there were many things going on, the psychedelic shop, the Oracle, the straight theater, mm -hmm. and all these things. And within each of these places that no longer exists, there was a team of people that felt like family. And oh, that yeah. family extended to the larger family of what was going on. And everybody felt that they were part of something. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I'd like to ask you what, what kind of work you do in your life. I mean, we've always wondered where people were and what they're doing now. and. And uh, do you still love music? Do you still listen well, to music? I still love music, and I still enjoy listening to music, and I love to dance, and um, um, I'm a chef. And you're, and you're a chef. Did you ever do any cooking in those days? Oh, yeah. I cooked. <laughs> I've cooked my whole life. I've been, you know, oh, I mean, said, I've been a, you know, cooking my whole life. And when I did the Renaissance Fair, I cooked, did all the... Did all the where'd staff take, meals. Where did that take place? Where was that, the Renaissance Fair? In um, Black Point, up in Nevada. Right in Nevada. And uh, you did a lot of cooking there. And, uh, I did a lot of cooking there, and then I, after that, I had my own catering business. And after that, then I, I had a coffee shop. And after that, wow, um, I went to, uh, I worked at the Ritz Carlton, and now I'm the executive chef of the Arch. I'm the executive chef for the Archbishop of San Francisco. And is that cooking for him or more than him? Is it multiple people? I cook for him, and I do all the, the special events, and I handle the household. Wow. And what part of the city is that? It's over in um, the cathedral, which is over in Japantown on Gary and Golf. You know. Got you. Um, so, as far as your future goes, mm -hmm. um, 
we pray for long life for everyone and, and, and dreams should not stop. So if you, from what you've come through in the 60s, from where you've grown to be where you are now, um, do you still dream about peace on earth? Do you still hope that our young people have a shot? Do you, if the world would listen to you, what advice would you give the world if young people were watching this 50 years from now? Well, I just think for us, we were really blessed to be able to be a part of that period. And I really wish that most children were able to experience that. And I do wish peace for children. And I just would hope that if people in a, as a whole could get along, you know, it was sort of like when you saw the Pope, when the Pope passed away, and to see all those hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people together sleeping on the streets and giving each other water and blankets and all the, the dignitaries in the world that never get along but somehow got along that day. Right. You know, for just one day, people could be able to do that. You know. And, and just be it. caring and loving to each other. Because that's the way it was in the 60s. It was. It know? was like that. Thousands and thousands of people in the park. Yeah, it was. Sharing their blankets. It was. Sharing and, you know, their water. Like I said, when they said over the radio and people open up your homes and, you know, and, and let everyone in. And you were proud of your city and you wanted people to come and, and, and take care of them. And, you know, so you still wish that for them. That's why, you know, I think you are, we are a special people being able to grow up in San Francisco during that time. Totally. Because it never leaves you. So this tape will inspire someone in the future uh, as part of this collection. And uh, it's hearing it secondhand, but hearing it from somebody who lived it who sees it the way they saw it, mm -hmm. is a way to inspire other people. Yeah. You know? Well, because I'm sure, that, I mean, a lot of kids, everyone, that's why the tourists come here. Exactly. Yeah, they come to the hate during the weekends Looking to for see. who knows what, yeah. what is it we're looking for? And that's you know. what it's about. You yeah, know? I mean, you can't, you, can, you, you have to be able to be there to feel, to have the feeling, but still it's it's a wonderful you know, thing for a kids to A lot of people have there. said that too, I can just tell you and I can tell you, but you had to be there, yeah. or people have said. I mean, it's an old adage, you know, it's like saying, I wish I could told you so, but it's, it is just, a, we were just very lucky. Yes, and uh, if, if uh, we could be left with anything, maybe be left with the inspiration of the Beatles, yeah. and Marvin Gaye, and the music, and it goes on forever. Yeah, because they don't make the music like they do. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's, it'll always, that music will never change. That's my favorite. This classic will never change. Yeah. And the message is strong, and that's what makes the music last. Yeah. It's it's eternal message, you know. Well, I would love to thank you, Rebecca Rebecca Nichols, would love to thank you for being part of this um, and sharing your life with us um, and, and helping us put the pieces together of the past and document it so that somehow people in the future can be inspired by the so many people that made this happen. Not only the major artists on the stage, but it took everybody to do their part to make the whole scene happen. As you said, share some water, share a blanket, and be yeah. part of well, it. You're going to meet so many more new people next week that really will, you know, that just it was such well, a there, big part there of are, There are many, many people coming on That's this. It's just being so... Be, we're being so happy to document the straight theater that was not there anymore. I know. Uh, yeah. To be able to document the, the psychedelic shop that was not yeah. there anymore. And uh, the Masonic, the, the, it just goes on and on, all of the things that weren't there, whether it's because of what came up on the street, because the rents all of a sudden jumped, because of the, uh, all of a sudden it's valuable property and moved the creative people out, you know. But the spirit of the 60s still lives. It still is in you, I can tell, and many and many others. And hopefully in the future, when people do research and look back, hey, what happened that day? They hopefully will get the message. So I so want to thank you for being here and sharing with us. Mm -hmm. Because, it's, yeah. because it's, it's many pieces of a puzzle that, that gives us the picture. And, and we want to thank you so much for your help, your help locating some of the some of the people who founded the Straight Theater, as well as your encounters. Um, without that, there is no memory. So thank you so very well, thank much. Thank you very much.